the other question I have mm -hmm. on top of the what are you going to do with that time instead is how are you going to feel? What happens when you skip this thing and how do you feel after? Do you want to go through that again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that you can do what instead? It's like, just go. You need to reassess. I never regret going. Mm -hmm. I never regret meditating. I never regret journaling. I never regret that nap I t needed. Like, I never regret mm -hmm. getting that extra hour or two in bed. Yeah. I never regret having a really good meal that I made for myself. It's all the times I don't do those things. Mm -hmm. It just, at, you already feel bad, and now you feel worse and worse and worse. And it's like, I am trying to break a cycle, a lot of cycles. Mm -hmm. So it's like... You ever wrote your cycles now? Like, hello, cycle. <laughs> I see your back. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that tonight. When I journal. Mental Health Monday. 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 Well, hello. I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm doing the edits. <laughs> this camera makes, you, makes me feel like, now nah, how about that? <laughs> Pull the receipts. This one's a little cooler. <laughs> like it's like head on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I haven't even looked at this. I probably look. Good I mean, here. you look good in the space. Mm -hmm. This white background. It's like it's funny how I have this room filled with so much color, but it's still a very strong white background that yeah, makes it's it stand not out. Yeah, especially with that ball behind you. It's just thing big as hell. Hello. And it looks so different on camera. But anywho. Hey, what's up, homies? This is uh, another episode of Mental Health Monday with my friend Jess. What up, Jess? What up? All right, tell the people who you are and what it is that you do. Oh, Lord. You can use this camera, you can use that camera, whichever one you choose. It's on you. <laughs> uh, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. My name is Jess. Mm -hmm. Jessica, but I go by Jess. Mm -hmm. Um, what am I? I'm a lot of things. I am a wellness guide. I teach meditation. I'm a Reiki practitioner. Um, I do amazing sound baths. Um, I'm a world traveler. I am a operations expert. Mm. 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 Uh, yeah, I do a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'll be doing stuff. What does it mean to be a guide? A guide? Mm -hmm. um, a guide is someone, a leader in a certain space. Um, but guide just feels like it's a more like gentle peer level. Like we in this together energy versus like I'm running the show and telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. um, a guide is also chosen by the people that they mm -hmm. are teaching. Yeah. Um, so people... You know, they have to get consent mm -hmm. in some way or request you to be their teacher. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like to measure black, but you may be like the best version of I'm blackity black I've seen. And I think it starts with your clothes. Okay. You be in your bag. You like, like, you know, when you're someone's friend, you don't want to be in your friend's business. Just like whenever they're like, hey, come be in my business. But with you, when I see you like get in your bag or you make a certain purchase, it makes me want to text me and be like, hey, man, so how much did that cost? Do they have that in my size? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because mm -hmm. I do not want to talk about how much this sweater was. I was going through something. I definitely could have got a knockoff. You can't say that and then not say it. Like, what are we talking about? A couple G's? No, 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 not there. But it was tempting. N not a couple G's. Mm -hmm. No, no. I'm mm -hmm. not, I wasn't going through anything that bad. Mm -hmm. Thick. Maybe like three something, maybe four something. I'll Can I touch it? Yeah. How long have you had it for? A year or two. They don't make sweaters like they used to. They don't. They, they don't. don't. I used to have this, uh, Canadian uh, sweater. It was green up top, tan in the middle. Paid my homie four hundred for it. It was uh, it was actually uh, I'd say three and a half decades old. It was like right out of the seventies, and like the material on that was probably one of the coolest sweaters I ever wore in my life. I gave it away to my homie. One of my favorite sweatshirts mm -hmm. was created before I was born, and it's so soft and so sturdy. 
and it makes me sad that I can't buy things like that now. Do you ever have regrets on where the world's going when it comes to fashion, clothing, and the feeling of textures and how we've really, we've lost quality for a deal? Yeah, because it's like when the seasons change and I start looking for, where's that sweater? And it's like, dang, I gotta replace it. Mm -hmm. I just got it last year. It needs to be replaced. Yeah. I'm tired of spending money on the same <laughs> chair every year. Like, I don't, I don't have an issue with just having something that, like, exists for 10 years with no issue. You just take care of it. No, and, like, there's trendy stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I don't mind being cheap with trendy stuff. Like, I'm gonna get this look off a couple times and then I probably won't deal with it again. But, mm -hmm. like, like, sweaters. Like, we were just talking about, like, I don't want to buy new sweaters every <laughs> Here. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a choice though for me because like my size tears through clothing and I wear things out quickly so like sneakers I'll be lucky if I get it for six months uh shirts if you a workout shirt just know you got four months just make that the four the best four months you've ever had in your but life how many would be in rotation <clears throat> I usually have a rotation of 17 that's a very specific number. It's 17. It's just, I know I know there's certain shirts oh for certain God. days. I even have certain sneakers for certain days. So, like, you can look at my sneakers and tell, oh, this was your leg day. Oh, this was your upper body day. Oh, well, that's that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. I have I have weightlifting shoes, and then I have, like, oh, I'm going to boxing class shoes, mm -hmm. or I'm just going for a walk. That That's normal. Mm -hmm. But... For the shirts. For the, the shirts. Same. You said yeah, 17. I'm 17. like, why do you know that? I just, I've, I've like looked at them and like one day I counted. I was like, I feel like I'm rotating the same shirts. Like I was buying new things and the new things weren't cracking the old group. Right. And I was just like, oh, so I bought you and I was interested or either I don't like the feel of this clothing against my skin or I don't like how the feeling of the product changes after it gets wet. Cause you know, yeah. certain clothing, they get wet and then it's just like, oh, this isn't fun anymore. If anything, it starts to become irritating. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So what brought you into the hair industry? We gotta, we gotta date hair? this. Hair? Hair. God. Yeah, what year so, was it? So, I think it was like 2010. Mm -hmm. I had this really whack job. And I had a lot of time on my hands, so I started a blog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just wanted to write. Out loud for the public I to see. I like to write. Mm -hmm. And I just that's all I wanted to do. How were blogs back then in 20, 2010? What was I using? Was I on WordPress? Mm -hmm. It was either, oh, Blogspot. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. It was either Blogspot <laughs> or WordPress, one of those. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just writing on different topics. With the, I was like sharing my stuff on Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as calculated as it is now. People have like a whole strategy. You know? Yeah. And when you saw that, you were like, yeah, now nah, I'm out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but mm -hmm. I was blogging and the posts that everyone kept responding to got the most views were anything about hair. Okay. That was when I had really long, thick hair and natural hair was still in this space where people were trying it, not sure, mm -hmm. transitioning and big chopping and all that. But I already had long natural hair because before I went into eighth grade yeah I wanted my hair to be bone straight like Aaliyah really? the singer like yeah. bone. so I was rock getting the boat. rock I was getting mm -hmm. perms relaxers whatever we gonna call it like the super strength mm -hmm. relaxer and it still was not bone straight oh your hair was like fighting Aaliyah's. back <laughs> and I was like why am I suffering and getting mm -hmm. my scalp burned into an oblivion just so <laughs> my hair still will not look the way I want it yeah. so I was like mom I don't want to do this anymore and she was like okay <laughs> so I got one more relaxer mm -hmm. for my 8th grade school pictures Okay. so that my hair was laid for my pictures and mm -hmm. that's the last one I need to dig up that picture Okay. that's my last relaxer Okay. it was like probably the year 2000 mm -hmm. and then after that you were just like the rest is history yeah so what was it like trying to find the right products for your hair back in the day i don't even i think my hair was braided a lot in high school mm -hmm. um one of my besties Antoinette, would braid my hair Antoinette from red hook brooklyn mm -hmm. love girl <laughs> she uh she would braid my hair 
and then I would do like double strand twists. Mm-hmm. I remember getting made fun of for those. But then like our junior year in high school, that was when the kinky twists where you added hair extensions were mm-hmm. popular. So all of a sudden I was wearing twists and I'm like, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Oh, so no, cool one, now? no one's going to give me credit. Right. I, I walk so you guys could run. All right. Just, okay. All right. Cool. So, I'm, I'm the giant that people speak of. You see my shoulders, right? You see, you yeah. see it? Ah. <laughs> I got teased and then it was a hot style and I was like, mm-hmm. okay. I'm not saying I started, I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. You finished it. I was like, really? All yeah. right. And then products, I feel like I was just using, I don't know, pink lotion and mm-hmm. just whatever it was. We didn't have pink a, lotion. The lust is pink, pink lotion, the pink bottle. I only think of the Johnson and Johnson when I think of the pink joint. I feel Iconic. like I'm I'm having a moment right now. Iconic. Okay. You have to Google it later. The the pink bottle. The pink bottle. Luster's pink. Luster's pink. Yes. Okay. All right. I was doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think what other different brands of grease. <laughs> I don't think we didn't have as many options. Mm-hmm. And then that's when people started getting into making their own products. Like, we're going natural, so we want our product products to be natural. People Is that what opened the door to you doing Atlanta stuff? or Atlanta stuff? Yeah, weren't you? I remember there was one point you was like, yeah, I got to go to Atlanta because we're trying to figure out. They have like a hair something that goes on in oh, Atlanta. Oh, the is it mm-hmm. the World Natural Hair Show? I don't know. It's, I just I know you were going called. there and you were like, I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. I'll be at the big <laughs> show <laughs> on hair. It was in a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's how you said it last time. And that was like back in the day. I said, hey, hey, get it, yo. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the World Natural Hair Store mm-hmm. show. I can't think of, there's so many now. Mm-hmm. But I can't remember exactly one that might exact one that might have been. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. I didn't want to blog about hair. <laughs> That's all people kept asking me about because everyone was obsessed with length. Oh, okay. They wanted long natural hair so they could have like mm-hmm. the big fluffy twist outs and stuff. And at that time, and you had what they wanted. And so I kept mm-hmm. doing posts. People asked me questions. How do you do this? How do you do that? So I was blogging about it. But I actually did not <laughs> blog it about hair. Did you ever get burned out doing that? Yeah, I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I didn't act. That wasn't what I really wanted to talk about. What did you really want to talk about at the time? I wasn't clear, but I guess now is what you would call like a lifestyle blogger. People blog about like day to day stuff and mm-hmm. travel and beauty and all that. I didn't want to be just in the hair lane, but mm-hmm. that's where I was, and I didn't know how to get out of it. Um, I also had like ideas for events, but I go through this now where I have ideas for stuff and I don't do it. And then someone does it like two, three, four, five years later. I'm like, dang. You have great ideas for stuff, not ideas. Every, I think I've picked up the phone to call you twice about some of your things. Like, hey, man. (laughs) (laughs) I, and Mm -hmm. I'm learning and it's happening faster now. It's almost like we all share this like, connection like there's this central brain so it's like look the idea came to you first little mm-hmm, neuron mm-hmm. if you don't do it, it's going to the, next, going one. To the next person yeah and so that's happened to me a lot mm-hmm. um trying to stop doing doing that mm-hmm. but yeah eventually i was over the hair stuff because i didn't care about it i didn't even like doing my hair so like writing about it was just not how long were you popular for in that space when it came to hair because you were technically one of the doors that people would go through when they would figure out what should their hair journey look like. Maybe to like 20, 2013, I definitely started dropping it mm-hmm. for sure. By then, I was over it. Um, were you like, I quit? <laughs> was it just a, it like you just stopped? Slow you just, <laughs> <fell off. laughs> the Homer Simpson going into the bushes slowly. Yeah, that's, that, that's the vibe. Congress was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was never like a clear mm-hmm. I'm not doing this anymore do you think were you well connected with people in that space at that time as a blogger or was it more you knew people but it wasn't really friendship so it's just we happen to be talking and existing in the same realm of stuff it's a mix Okay. Um, there are definitely people that I'm still friends with and we still talk and hang out that's nice. Check up on each other. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. And then some of them continued on with mm-hmm. blogging and being influencers in different spaces, and mm-hmm. then and then some stopped. It's a mix. So I did definitely anybody, have some friends from that era. Did anybody ever build 
companies that are successful from that time. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yep. I like to see people win. Yeah, I know a few people that are Mm -hmm. Mm full-time. Even if they use their momentum from blogging and influencing to do something else, Mm -hmm. they still, you know, took advantage of it. So, what are five things that go into a great event? A great event? Mm -hmm. Because you had a lot of ideas for events. And I want to hear your thought process because I've always wanted to, like, if you don't mind, pick your brain on either what's stopping you or what do you look at the room and you're like, I don't have that right now. So if I did this thing, me being aware of the things I don't have will kind of get in the way of what I'm trying to do. There's like mad questions within those questions. Um, one That's thing. I was like, just I've, say five. One th- so five things that go into a great event. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm a logistics person. Mm-hmm. And um, I do it for a living. <laughs> Tell me more. And I work in operations. Okay. I ain't never asked you about that. Yeah. I like not being in your business. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> As a friend, I enjoy it. I'm like, hey, yeah. whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah, I work in operations. So, like, mm-hmm. I can't even go to a music festival in peace sometimes. I'm mm-hmm. like, why is security over there? Why? Mm-hmm. Is, where's the signage? Like, I'm always... So, being thoughtful about how like people can flow through your event yeah. smaller ones it's not as much of a job but, but once the scale ones, goes where's up. the signage yeah. who's checking people in where mm-hmm. do they sit are we starting on time yeah. are you leaving grace period for people to trickle in like mm-hmm. is the main person who's the focus not running everything so it could be a better event and i've done that and it's yeah. a lot it's not fun mm-hmm. um what else um people want to feel like they're getting some value out of it I know when you say value, people think like, oh, it's a business or networking. or Even fun events, like you're going there to get something out of it. So having a clear re- vision around what people are going to be taking home with them. Like, are they just having a good time? Are they mm-hmm. meeting people? Are they learning something? Yeah. I do wellness events now. So it's like there's usually an intention I set. We're going to dive into those wellness events. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. What else makes a good event? So if you're clear on your audience, you'll have the right people there. Mm-hmm. So like the vibes are good. Mm-hmm. Um, like e- even like something big, like I mentioned a music festival, like it's clear, like there's a lineup, you know who the crowd's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Um, so like when you're promoting and all that stuff and knowing who your audience is, is very helpful. Cause mm-hmm. it makes sure you have the right people in the room. Yeah. And you understand what needs to be delivered for this kind of audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then what's your last thing? Because you've said four things. I four? can count. I thought, it was it? five, but you already got to four. Wait, wait. How did I get to five? I mean, I'm at four? You're at four right now. What did I say? Logistics stuff. Mm-hmm. Knowing your audience and Knowing delivering the audience. deliverables. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We about. touched on the flow of things. Mm-hmm. Oh, for you, that's the logistics? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right, so we're at two then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Audience, clear. Mm-hmm. Ri- oh, that's three, right? <laughs> <laughs> you should have had a whiteboard or something. <laughs> Just wrote it down. I think you did. <laughs> Do you? Mm-hmm. Really? There are so many people that are successful that have ADHD. Those out. two things aren't correlated, but I like what I noticed. Because it's like, you be successful with or without it, yeah. but like, yeah. do you self manage? So I, I, the way I figured out I need to get tested, because mm-hmm. people would be like, oh, people with ADHD do this to like cope. And, do, and I'm like, everyone doesn't do that? They're like, no, that's not normal. And I'm like, Oh, and then like there's just so much ADHD content online right now. It's just like overwhelming. It's I had to flood. like clear clear my timeline. It's I was like, enough. Oh, no. But I kept finding out they're like, oh yeah, people with ADHD do this to cope, and I'm like, I do that. I thought that everyone did that. They're like, no, like, <laughs> and I kept things I thought were normal, mm-hmm. well, normal, regular. I don't know, standard. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the proper. All those terms are proper. Labeling. There's nothing wrong with that. Everyone's normal. The word normal actually doesn't belong. Yeah. Because everyone that's has a different like, version of norm. Yeah, so it's like, like what is normal? it's a word that's overused mm-hmm. and not really understood. So mm-hmm. you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I kept saying it doesn't feel right. <laughs> Status quo mode of operation would be mm-hmm. like a good substitute words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So logistics, audience. Mm-hmm. What's three other things? 
said logistics, audience, being clear on what people are getting out of it. Mm -hmm. Um. So it's being clear on what people get out of it, branding, or is it more deliverables? So, like, for example, I've been doing, I think, seven to eight events for men, creating spaces of vulnerability, all men spaces. And a lot of people's like, well, why are you doing it for all men? I'm like, because all women deserve space, all men deserve space. And sometimes there's certain conversations that need to happen or it's just to fill a curiosity of, hey, if I'm a guy and I go to an all men space, is someone doing that so I can experience it to see if it's something that I would like? Mm-hmm. And it's something that my community would need and I see the benefits of it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a deliverable to me. You have men, it's not one woman in the space until everything's over. Okay, cool, delivered. Now there's mental health and wellness that's mixed in it, but it's like first all men are there and then it's everything else. So I would combine Mm -hmm. the space for men and mental health awareness, like that is your intention. Mm -hmm. So when I said where people get out of it, it's like, what is your intention for this event, this Mm -hmm. space? Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, and that's kind of connected to your audience. Um, But yeah, that's what I meant. I want to do one for all women, but (laughs) the logistics behind that is going to look different of, I kind of sometimes we still have to get back to your points though because I don't want you to lose it because I don't focus we're gone we're I'm <laughs> we're gonna out. out I don't move on <laughs> we're, we're, what's the next question I can't remember what I have listed at um, this point logistics community deliverables were the last two that go into making a good event this is so bad I was like I'm gonna bring you back I'm gonna remember all the things we need to remember to bring it back because you've done a lot of great events so and i like picking people's um brains because like i think there's a misunderstanding of because juice is in this space and he's the person from velvet that did all those things that what i'm doing is the right thing and for me i'm like nah every day is just a moment for me to learn from like what other people are doing and like talk to them about it because like I tell folks who tell me, hey, why don't you do this? Well, why don't you go to these other people that have been here for years? You may not know them, but now that you do know them, are you going to give them a chance or are you not showing up because you don't know them? Because that's not really fair to yourself. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Last thing. (laughs) (laughs) Last thing. I would say the prep. I know it's still logistics, but I was talking about like the day of. Day well, of prep or before you get before there? Before you get there. That is the most important part yeah. to so, me. So maybe that is why it's the finale. Yeah, that's that's the most important. It's the day of uh-huh. operations. Yeah. It's like how the event moves and flows. Mm-hmm. And then there's everything that happens before your event begins. Yeah. Um, I have checklists. <laughs> I have... How long is your longest checklist? Show. I don't you have run a show. Mm-hmm. <sighs> run a show I have a homegirl I work with like um, we collaborate all the time and I know <laughs> she's probably picked up some hackers from me <laughs> but we are serious like mm-hmm. we know who's doing what at what time we know what supplies are involved if any like yeah what's the appropriate time to go over your checklist together with the person that you're putting an event together with a week a week ahead okay the latest okay if it's a huge event you Mm -hmm. need to have multiple checkpoints but at least a week before so you have time Mm -hmm. to be like oh we forgot this and that when you're not under under pressure you have more time for your brain just not be like i ask because uh and then you check in two days before and then you text them you good the night before (laughs) and then yeah i've i've experienced having people hit me up like the day of and I'll tell them honestly, like, look, whatever you're asking for, it's not happening. It's Can you the print this? Of. Can you bring the? I'm like, no, I, I, can't. I, I can't. And I'm not going to try and find it because this day is dedicated towards us delivering. We should keep our focus us delivering instead of us being hung up on the one thing we didn't get done that we didn't really discuss was that important until that day. Because mm-hmm. to me, that's anxiety. And we don't need anxiety because like. The people who come to the stuff that we put as folks in the mental health and wellness space, they are sensitive to something's wrong with the people doing this thing or something's a bit off. Yeah, everyone can tell and people feed off of it. Mm -hmm. 
Now for the run of show, what's the appropriate time to go over the run of show? To create it or to review it? Let's talk about creating and then reviewing. <laughs> <laughs> creating it mm -hmm. the rough draft needs to be done shortly after the inception of the event okay so like if you we have, have like you know you have your space agree, uh -huh. and you know you have the time mm -hmm. you need to talk through the runners you need to draft it and everybody just agree to it all right you know your times you know the expectations is everyone cool with this mm -hmm. okay cool now what's the best time to review it after it's all set up that meeting a week before the event uh -huh. and, then that's, that's and then when, when you, you check in again a day or two before uh -huh. the event again to make sure everyone's clear okay okay cool it's just, mm -hmm. just i'm gonna go be listening to this interview like say word oh this is a great point you uh, you, you bring up so many things <laughs> and it's funny because mm -hmm. like for bigger events i think people are like i got it i got it i know what's going on it's straightforward and still we'll be like where's the i can't do you know where I, I can't right now. Can't help you. Yeah. That's why we had that seven days before. It's crazy. Yeah. It's People, and it's not being rude. It actually uh, it's a good way to enforce boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if it's something important, like I'm doing a sound bath and the sound bowls aren't here, then mm -hmm. okay. That's crucial. <laughs> That's, <important. laughs> That's crucial. Why That's aren't they crucial. here? That's crucial. That was yeah. my fault. <laughs> how, did you, how did you do that? But no. Would um, you like some of this better butter that my partner made? Yeah, it's a great better butter product. I use it for my hands because I can't let these cameras catch me being ashy. Were well, you trying to tell me that I'm ashy? No, no. <laughs> I'm telling you sharing is caring. <laughs> and that these lenses work well under these good lights. <laughs> you good. If you want some, you can, but you you good. You Gucci. Smells good. I would have warned you if that wasn't the case. I would have been like, look, go in the bathroom. I got a mirror. Here's the butters. You got it. <laughs> Wash your hands in the sink. We appreciate got you. It, appreciate it. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. So I mean, after. I'm really dry, actually, from washing my hands all day. Are you? Mm -hmm. okay. In between, you got to really get in there. Well, I'm glad I got you out the way. Um, what was I going to say? So after putting this together, is there a certain reason you're so organized when it comes to an event? being structured prior to the event did you have an experience before a bad experience or have you always been this person of like hey if we're doing the thing we actually need to be concerned with these other things um it's a combination of things one my brain naturally works like that mm -hmm. um might be you know a little anxiety but mm -hmm. always like being prepared and like thinking things through ahead of time yeah um I can't think of a specific event where like things went wrong and I was like, oh, I need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I mean, little things will happen. I'm like, okay, next time I know I need to do this, but I can't think of there being like some terrible event that inspired me to get more organized. Yeah. I think I've just picked that up from work experiences and just learning like this is what I need to feel at peace <laughs> the day of. You know how someone has like an angel and a devil on their shoulder? I feel like you have a sign that says, I'm that nigga. And like it goes down like right after you was done with like your explanation. Just saying. <laughs> the imagery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're there. You're in the room. You see. But um, so now that we're done with hair and we're talking about you structuring events, wellness events in the community. How many places have you done a wellness event at? Like outside of DC, or is DC usually the mainstay? Oh, outside market? of DC? Yeah. And how long have you been in the space? I'm not sure I have an answer for that. So, like, outside of DC, a handful? I don't really know. You can say it. it's okay to flex. You, just, you know, you got nice resume. I really resume. do not know. I feel like my you don't brain remember? is like, mm. You don't remember the places? You never did, like, New York, Philly? Philly Jones. I've done Philly. Mm-hmm. Um, have I done anything in New York? I've done like private events. They count. Yeah. They count. Um, but it mo it's mostly in D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Mm-hmm. DMV. DMV. Got you. Got you. 
Um, how long I've been in the wellness space? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there's like my journey and then I slowly started wanting to learn how to do different things so I could teach others. Mm -hmm. But that transition, I officially would say 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, was when your journey started? No. Let's talk about your journey. Oh, God. It's okay. It's all right. We got moist hands now, so we're good. Mm -hmm. Melanin and moist. I feel like I need a little more. But... Girl, I got you. I Say less. We, we, here been, you go. I've been in boxing class, and I feel mm -hmm. like my knuckles have, are just taking a beating. Like, How's boxing going for you? It's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like my knuckles are getting real dark and rough from... Get, I be getting into that bag. I do. <laughs> I visualize something on the bag yeah. some days. I'll be getting there. It could be an affirmation. Mm -hmm. It could be something I want to let go of. It could be a person that's getting mm -hmm. on my nerves. Mm -hmm. I go in. Yeah. And Good. so my knuckles are a reflection. Good, good job, you. Good job, you. You doing that. My knuckles are a reflection. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you build character. All right? Hammers and nails. <laughs> that's a part of my wellness. <laughs> it Tell is. Me. Tell me. It's a great release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like after boxing class, even if I don't want to go, and mm -hmm. I go anyway, mm -hmm. 7 a.m. class, Yeah. by the time I get out of there, I feel like I could do anything. I'm actually uh, interviewing one of my guys who I went to college with that runs boxing classes in D.C. for one of my interviews on Saturday. We're doing that interview. Nice. He, like, wasn't available in the week when I usually shoot, so I was like, no, nah, let's do Saturday. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. Wait, yeah, I go to um, a spot called Boombox. We box to the beat. Mm-hmm. It's my jam. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my wellness journey. <laughs> it's complicated. It's it, complicated. it was the eyes, but keep going. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like there's like the mental, physical health part, and mm -hmm. then there's like the spiritual part. Okay. So it's like. Well, this is your time to rap. I'm listening. <laughs> um. So, goodness gracious, I was a PK, a preacher's kid. Really? Yep. Never knew that. Mm -hmm. I was a church boy. I was in the church, mm -hmm. in the choir. Mm -hmm. Oh, you was in the choir too. Sunday school, vacation Bible school. Same, same. Wednesday night service. Same. Got me fucked up. I'm Revivals. 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 I'll do some revival. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You no. Know, yeah, we was doing all that. I was singing solos. And oh, in the, in the, in the, solos. In the children's choir. Okay, okay. In the choir. Okay, lead. <laughs> it was a lot. It's a lot of drama. It was. <laughs> I really wanted to learn to play organ, but. We'll they, stop you. They wouldn't let me play. Oh, that sucks. How dare they stand in the way of your I greatness? Know. I know. Um, I think through the course of my child, we were in three different churches. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Three, you go ahead and tell your story. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> there was one until mm -hmm. about sixth grade. Then in middle school, we were at another church. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, we were at another church. What areas? All in Jersey. Well, for me, my first original church was in East Orange. And then my most recent church was the one I've been a part of for about 20 years or so. Praise Temple on South Orange Avenue in Newark. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm closer to Philly. Okay, okay. So you're on the south side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is that like past Camden, by Camden? I was about to say, I don't know why I always say Philly instead of Camden. Cam Camden was like 15, 20 minutes up the road. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I can say Camden. <laughs> <laughs> Camden's across the water from Philly Lake. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, so um, when I went to undergrad, mm -hmm. I had a lot of mental health challenges. Even when I was reflecting on it recently and I was like, a lot happened and I feel like I fell through the cracks. Like no one was like, hey, something's going on here. Mm -hmm. This is what you should do. Um, dealing with like depression, anxiety, like deep depression, anxiety. Yeah. Um, also my dad passed away while I was in uh, school. So that just was like mm -hmm. another layer to it. It like was just a really, thank you, a really low, heavy time. Mm -hmm. And so when I got out, of school by Grace God. <laughs> you made it. Man. You made never would have um, made it. Hey, that's that's what it's on. giving right now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um my mental health still wasn't great. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as bad as when I was in school, but it still wasn't great. 
and I think trying to be more physically fit and learn like how to eat nutritional balanced meals and mm -hmm. um, learning about working out because I was like so skinny my whole life so like you know you get in your 20s that things start changing you're like hold on mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do yeah. so I was like exploring physical fitness and all that that is how I learned about yoga mm -hmm. and then through going to yoga classes I started to explore meditation um and there's other little woo woo things along the way <laughs> that I've like checked out, but meditation is really big for me. Mm -hmm. um, yoga, I'm not as consistent as I would like to be. Um, now it's getting cold. I usually start back with my yoga practice. Cause mm -hmm. It's nice to do in the house in the winter time, but yeah. Um, yeah, meditation is really really big for me. Are yoga and meditation two separate forms? Two. Or do they? layer each other they like intersect at certain points um they're the same mm -hmm. take your time T take your time <laughs> like mm -hmm. meditation is part of the yogi practice mm -hmm. i'm not the yoga expert so mm -hmm. i don't want to go too much it's your experience it's your experience you speak it from your experience that's okay it's it's, mm -hmm. it's it's the same okay um I know some people are scared of like yoga and meditation because they think it's like a religion or it's not. Mm -hmm. After that documentary came out, I know a lot of things change. Yeah. yeah. You can apply your religious beliefs to your yoga or, or meditation practice, mm -hmm. but they're not really, like they don't have to be a religious yeah. thing. I got you. Yeah. Even like today, like I did a wellness event, I could tell like some of the aunties and uncles was like what you got us doing in here <laughs> <laughs> I could tell like they were like <laughs> so so this is in a cult right? <laughs> it was like it had to be like 60 some mm -hmm. people in the room yeah. I could just tell people were like What's going on? <laughs> right, East. I don't even hear ringing bells and bowls and whistles. I could tell they were like. <laughs> you, just, you could just feel it. I the usually, side eyes. When I remember, I do try to slip that mm -hmm. it's not a religion mm -hmm. in there so people feel more comfortable. Yeah. Getting nervous. Um, You finish your story. We can get back to that. But yeah, that's how it started. And mm -hmm. then like. When something is really impactful for me, not yeah. all the time, but many times I want to know more about it. And mm -hmm. in this case, I want to know about it more about more about it and learn mm -hmm. to be a guide for others. OK, a guide. Mm -hmm. Meditation okay. guide. I thought I heard you say God. I was like, oh, girl, we just God. went from it's not a cult. He just says, oh, you wild. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. Me. I want you to be a God. <laughs> Worship me. <laughs> what I can see that happening. You'd be like, I right, stop worshiping. That's, that's, that's a little bit too that's much. That's a little much. Get off yeah. your knees. Stand up. Stand up. It was supposed to be a joke, guys. Right? <laughs> taking it too far, guys. We're taking it too far. Lord. Yeah. But yep. Yeah. How has changing your wellness journey, your wellness journey, has sharing your wellness journey with others changed the feeling? of what you were looking to gain from this journey? I will say my wellness work mm -hmm. is doesn't have this like draining energy that other work can sometimes have. For example? I'm just like tired. Like I feel energized after. Um, even when I'm tired, because maybe it was like a full day event and mm -hmm. we're doing this and that, I still feel energized, like revved up. Yeah. Um, a lot of like healing modalities when you practice them and you lead other other people through them they benefit you as well what's a modality <laughs> i had a whole conversation with someone about this but explain why? to me what a modality is just now i'm like why just, did i say that no 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 we, just, we was talking about uh, sat words <laughs> <laughs> Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Just explain it. Even in the simplest terms ever, okay? Just go ahead, please. We got to have fun with this stuff. When it comes to our community, you got to have fun with it, all right? Just go ahead. I'm like, dang. Now I'm like, how would I? Uh huh. It is a tool. Mm hmm. So I would say a tool. Mm hmm. 
That is my short answer. Okay. <laughs> what is the purpose of the tool? Um, I mean, like specific ones? Modalities. Well, well the tool, mm -hmm. I said healing modalities because they're tools that are intended to help us get to a more healed, balanced state. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, so some people that's yoga, mm -hmm. some people that's meditation, mm -hmm. um, Reiki, mm -hmm. which I'm a Reiki practitioner. Yeah. Um, there's so much. There's like aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. I want to get more into aromatherapy sometimes, but I don't have the time to dedicate myself. So. All you need is like an oil diffuser or some incense you like. It doesn't have to be this grand thing. Like <sighs> My partner's allergic to that stuff. She has like uh, respiration issues. So mm -hmm. when we, we like had a filter that we actually used in a room that would be nice to use to go to sleep. And she had like an inflammation thing that happened mm. from that. So like that's why that's like one of the reasons we can't use like stuff like that here. There's things you can do <clears> like... Um, I know there's candles, you, but, you know. It doesn't always have to be something that fills the entire room. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have um, an oil, and you could put drops of essential oil into it, mm -hmm. um, because essential oil is too strong to put directly on your skin by itself. Yeah, so it doesn't, like, burn your skin and stuff like that, base, right? Yeah, you need a yeah. base. You can do stuff like that and putting it, like, on places where you would smell it behind mm -hmm. the ears. That can be calming. Um... Even like the, if you use fragrance soaps and all that stuff, which mm -hmm. I usually do unscented soaps most of mine. Really? Yeah. Cause why do you, why do you be like, smelling so nice then? <laughs> is that just you? Or is that like the other products? I feel like I don't have a smell. <laughs> well, you have things that you use that smell nice. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not a big like scented mm -hmm. body wash thing. Cause yeah. I think I had a couple bad experiences when I was younger. Oh, okay. But like, the soaps that like someone's auntie made, mm -hmm. those usually don't bother me mm -hmm. when they're scented. Um, but yeah, like you can use an eye pillow with lavender or oil of your choice in it. It doesn't, mm -hmm. aromatherapy does not always have to be this big like thing with big oil diffuser. Yeah, you know? a whole production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the reason I question, or I, I had you explain what a modality is, I understand what a modality is. That's not the question, right? publicly so i do cloud architecture right and when i explain certain things that have to do with like the services of cloud architecture what are we looking to accomplish what is the purpose behind the work you have to explain it to the person in layman's terms you got to meet people where they are mm -hmm. so when like all my wellness folks be like modalities i'll be like now you know these folks don't know what the hell modalities mean man it, explain it to them please because because when you part i keep it simple i'm usually good at it it just slips out sometimes it, there's nothing wrong with the slip <laughs> i would just like to see more of when you use a word explain it to the people because like doctors do this too when they're explaining to a patient hey here's what's wrong with you and then they'll use 17 big words and the patient's just like yeah yeah what you said okay so we get a surgery or we not get i don't know you gonna get this out or not like inflammation some people mm -hmm. don't know what that means it's swollen athletes it's know what it is because we've experienced it but the average person would think oh inflammation i didn't know you were sick like you got a cold or something and it's like oh mm -hmm. Because it's like, it's different uses. So when I hear a word, I'd be like, define it. <laughs> Pretty please. Yeah, I would say tools would be mm -hmm. my most straightforward. Okay. What um, I think this is hilarious. I just want to let you know. What? When you, when you were like, oh. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> like when I told someone, that's, you over here ruminating. <laughs> when you said you said that, I said, why would you do that? You're ruminating for 48 hours. But that person earned it. That person earned it. That's what we're going to say. They earned that. Um. So within your wellness journey and you going on your journey versus you sharing your journey, what are things that you have noticed? going on my journey because mm -hmm. like, like about myself or other yeah people what or? have you noticed about yourself <sighs> one thing i think is interesting is like this idea of resistance against things that you know are good for you and mm -hmm. things you even enjoy so you're talking about the 
people in that position, like you in that position as you learn to enjoy these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like even boxing class, mm -hmm. um, it's a good outlet for me. I get to move my body, get some cardio in. We do body weight, core exercises. It's fun, the music's great. Mm -hmm. And I was still like, I don't wanna go. It's like, what do you wanna do instead? Let's talk about it. Do you ever see a friend of a mirror and do that? I talk to myself. Mm -hmm. Even if I don't say it out loud, it's like, yeah. so what do you wanna do instead of going to boxing class? Yeah. You don't have an answer. Why don't you wanna go? <laughs> like, don't even have it. I don't want to. It's like, that's not true. Yeah. Put your shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, but I've noticed the way resistance comes up mm -hmm. in situations. Like, if it's for someone else, yeah. I will go over the moon, around the world and back, do the most. But the moment it's for myself, there's like this resistance. Like, I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. I've noticed that a lot, and especially the past few months, I've been pushing through it like consistently. Cause I'm like, I really need to get over this hump. Life will always have its challenges, but I really I need to break through. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one thing I've noticed. Um, and I'm now facing it head on versus letting it keep getting over on me. Not that I won't slip up and cancel a class here and there, <laughs> but this, I yeah, I've noticed that a lot. Um, what else? I mentioned like my wellness work pours back into me um, in a way that some other things I do don't always <laughs> leave me pretty exhausted and just drained. Mm -hmm. um, so I do appreciate that. Um, I've learned the importance of community. I feel like a lot of people, when we have challenges, we try to do on our own. We isolate. I definitely catch myself doing that. And especially as it's getting darker and colder, um, I am intentionally like, all right, we need a girls' night. Who wants to get together? We don't even have to plan. A it doesn't always have to be a theme. Like, let's just get together and hang out like people used to do. Mm -hmm. I think social media makes you feel like every moment, moment needs to be curated. Yeah. Just just pull up. Just pull up and chat. <laughs> just pull up. Yeah, what's up? What you been out to? Yeah. Like, yeah. So keep it in um, the budget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, every time I leave the house, it's two hundred dollars. Yeah, and it's like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> we literally cannot do it. Yeah, no. So they yeah. want a half. So yeah, um, community is really important. I like the way you use the word community. Um, I joke around with my friends, and I say, hey. I'm glad we're friends and that when we use the word community, it's used and explored the same way instead of just like you use the word community as a plot device, but you don't really mean community. You mean who's supporting me directly when I need them, but I don't show up for them. And it's mm -hmm. like, that's not what community is. Community is yeah. a two way street. Mm -hmm. There's a reason people from classes that you may have taught five years ago reach back out to you just to check in and say, hey, how have you been? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well. Just, you know, you have time to chat and FaceTime five minutes, 10 minutes. Yeah. And it's really just the convo itself. I, <clears throat> I'm not perfect, but I show up for people a lot. And this year, I've had a lot of personal challenges where I haven't always been able to show up the way I want to. Mm -hmm. I've taken it really hard. Because it's like, well, first of all, I barely accept help as it is. But now really? I'm, I know I'm working on it, actively working on it. How so? I am. When people, you? When people are like, can I help you? Or let me, I let them. Mm -hmm. Even when it's uncomfortable and it gets better mm -hmm. every time. <laughs> Was that another self-talk moment where you had to be like, well, why aren't we accepting help when you need yeah. help? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was automatic. Like, I wasn't even thinking. I'm just like, no, I'm good. You're not good. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying you're good? Not even thinking. No, I'm good. It's like a just reflex. Bring that back. <laughs> so, there, it's funny. People laugh because people are like, oh, can I help you? And mm -hmm. I'll be like, yes, I will accept help. Like, I say it just like that. I think people are like, why is she saying that? I'm like, mm -hmm. I am hyping myself up. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to redirect my thoughts. But yeah, this year has just been very challenging and I haven't always been able to show up I, the way I want to. Mm -hmm. And it made me want to isolate. And in turn, people this year has shown me how people are willing to show up for me. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, because of who I am, because I've shown up for them, because we're just friends and that's what friends do. Like, um, like a couple weeks ago, I posted like, I'm sad, someone send me flowers. 
and I was joking and people actually sent me flowers and I, one of my friends was like, oh, you know, did you get some at your door? I was like, no. I was like, let me go check the front desk. And I go to the front desk and mm. there's like four bouquets down there. So mm. now I'm boohoo crying mm -hmm. in front of the whole leasing office. Mm -hmm. Cause they were like, is it your birthday? And I was like, no, I'm just having a hard time. They were like. Good job. Good job that person who got you the bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Do you not realize how you showed up for people though? Um. Like in the past. Cause like you're not you're not going to always be able to be who you used to be. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, for example, I think it was either 2019 or 2018. You showed up for me and we went to Nelly's. Oh, we did. Right? We had, I think, wings, drinks. It was like an empty day. I was heartbroken and sad and very pissed off in the world. And when you did that, I was just like... And you were apologizing. I was like, it's okay. Like, do your I thing. Don't, I don't remember. And I tell people that people don't understand that, like, 2018 to 2019, there's just things I don't remember for, mm -hmm. like, most of those years. Those two years, I, like, remember the photo shoots and when I was active and doing stuff. But the things in between is just all dark. So, like, so when blurred. I try to think back to it, it's just, like, there's very few moments I remember. It's not even a blur. It's just, like, black space. Yeah. So, like, that. I, anytime I see you, I'd be like, Nelly's. My nigga. <laughs> it's just... It's just <laughs> so, like, to hear that you are disappointed in how you're not able to currently show up like you would want to it's like it's okay though because like you've always showed up never on time but you're always there <laughs> and we're not here to judge <laughs> when i came and i saw you early i said look look at growth look at okay i early are right, okay hey <laughs> i've had to get over the time blindness mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. there's this moment where your brain is like i should leave right now mm -hmm. and then there's this other voice that goes no nah, it's too early and now you're like oh i need to do this this and this and next thing you know mm -hmm. now you're leaving too late yeah i didn't even know that was you when i came out i came out the car and i was like i think that's my homie right but like where i live it's like a mix of people so you don't stare so i was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna walk to my steps in front of my house and i'm gonna look over <laughs> and if she wave it's her if not person's none of my business i'm gonna go inside you did the hand i said okay it's the homie <laughs> oh, only was like would have been like i have time to go home mm-hmm and eat something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me fold these clothes. I call my mom back. I call my mom back. Oh, oh my I God. I need to email so-and-so. That's crazy. Nah, that's crazy. And now you didn't account for a rush hour. And mm -hmm. now look, like mm -hmm. the time blindness thing. Yeah. I've been trying to listen to that first voice that goes, you should leave now. Because mm -hmm. I'm usually ready. Mm -hmm. If I don't leave after that, all this other crap happens and now have you done a lot of inner voice work because you talk to yourself a lot i do a lot i don't think i've intentionally uh-huh and that inner voice talks back it's like a whole discussion it's not just like oh, things are said yeah it's it's a lot yeah like sometimes when I go into the office, mm -hmm. I'll be talking and people are like, huh? I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not it's you. It's just me and me. <laughs> <laughs> We're just working through some things. Don't worry about it. You ever tell someone who like interjects into your conversation with yourself, like, oh, mind your business. It was me talking to me now. Just let's not do all that. The little bit, of, not, not a little bit. The mm -hmm. talking to myself that I was doing before got mm -hmm. worse after COVID lockdown. Oh. Because, you know, oh. I, I was living alone. You built a new habit. It. you have a whole new habit now a whole new habit yeah yep yep even how like when people pray they're all quiet and i'm like all right so <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me <laughs> what am i supposed to do <laughs> like i know a b and c but x y z like i'm so upset <laughs> i really be talking talking mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember the last time I got on my knees in a traditional way. I don't, I talk out loud. Your knees, your knees don't need all that. You could pray sit it. The floor would be hard too. It, it, this is very hard the floor. The floor, floor would be hard and be far. God, you deserve better. We all do. Lord. <laughs> it's just, it's just that simple. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I talk to myself a lot. I ask because like, 
you know, it's not easy to self-correct yourself. You feel me? Like sitting down, you convince yourself, we don't want to go to boxing. And it's like, well, well why not? What what happened? Like, let's let's ridiculous. really discuss this. Let's, what's going on? <laughs> why don't you want to go? And having that heart to heart moment of, OK, well, what are you going to do with that time then? And that's really one of the best questions you can ask. What are you going to do with that time? And then if you decide to do it, do you actually do the thing? That's what's most important. The other question I have mm -hmm. on top of the what are you going to do at that time instead is how are you going to feel? What happens when you skip this thing and how do you feel after? Do you want to go through that again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you can do what instead? It's like, just go. You need to reassess. I never regret going. Mm -hmm. I never regret meditating. I never regret journaling. I never regret that nap I t needed. Like, I never regret mm -hmm. getting that extra hour or two in bed. Yeah. I never regret having a really good meal that I made for myself. It's all the times I don't do those things. Mm -hmm. It just, at, you already feel bad, and now you feel worse and worse and worse. And it's like, I am trying to break a cycle, a lot of cycles. Mm -hmm. So it's like... You ever wrote your cycles now? Like, hello, cycle. <laughs> I see your back. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that tonight. When I journal. All right. I'll be hoping every time I uh, pick up the phone and call you, I'm like, I really hope that that gave her what she was looking for. Because, like, you be... I don't think... Um, I think sometimes when people think about people going through it, they're like, the world's burning down around them! And it's like... Maybe the wood was just pre-burnt and like they just happen to be talking about it out loud. Yeah. That's all. And, and you are quite honest on TikTok. <laughs> so when it comes across my feet, I'll be like, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> what? Who did it to you and why? You really text me so long. Are you okay? I'm like, I'm, I think I am. What did I do? You were honest. Why are you asking me that? You were honest. People aren't used to seeing honesty in those forms. I think I'm honest mm -hmm. online about a lot of things except dating <laughs> well I don't, I don't really talk about i don't well, even post memes i send them to the group chat uh, well that 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 run-in was still hilarious because oh. i just happened to have an extra i said hey you want one? Oh, the burger this joint this joint taste they taste incredible <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. It's hard to turn down Shake Shack, especially when it's free. Oh, that wasn't Shake Shack. Oh, well, that was a burger from another spot that I frequent with. That's how that's you out know. in Virginia. It, it was too dark down there. And yeah, I, and I haven't been wearing my glasses. I was like, as long as it's good. It tasted better than yeah Shake Shack. Shake Shack's right next door, but it was not that. I was really mm -hmm. Shake Shack surprised. burger was, I was actually like, hmm. smaller. I was that like, burger I gave you was much bigger than Shake Shack. I was burger. like, hmm, this is mm -hmm. different. It doesn't taste. They must have changed something. <laughs> <laughs> you were trying to figure out what this Shake Shack changed the recipe. Like, you know that their bread has a distinct taste? It does. It so does. So I was like, hmm, it does. okay. It does. Now that's why I was from Virginia. And then I, it's been so long since I've gotten Shake Shack. I was like, did it normally wrap up this stuff like this? No, not at all. The okay. presentation was key. You, just, you felt secure in your burger while I eating did. that. Yeah. Like it's one of those places where you can eat your sandwich and do I have sauce in my fingers? Oh no, because it was wrapped up so nicely. That burger though was quite sloppy in a good way. <laughs> the sauce exploded on certain bites. You're like, like oh sauce everywhere. There's, there's pockets of sauce. Tomato was trying to escape out the side. <laughs> <laughs> I can't that was delicious. Thinking back at it now. And my date was all late too. I was like, this Yeah, fool. that was that was crazy. That was crazy. But you know, I always protect the profit. I was like, hey man, you want me to move when they pull up so you good? Cause I did like, not care. Yeah, I, I know you don't. But I was like, it's a, it's just about the look and what you're trying to accomplish this care. day. That's all. Like, cause like, I don't care. all the folks there, they know me. You feel what I'm saying? Like half the folks who come through are me. So it's just like you know. I don't care. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm like, who is that? My friend. All right. You late. So let's focus on that. Coworkers came over. Who's that? I was like, my homie. She goes, oh, okay. Has an incredible smile. I was like, yeah. Other homie. Hey, who that? So I was with my friend. I was like, oh, she fine as hell. I was like, yeah, no, I know. No. Wait, like, where, did, where they at? <laughs> Girl, you don't, you don't need to meet them. It's fine. You don't need to meet them. So I got some good ones, though. But, like, you know, they busy. They, they, they are busy. 
Anywho. <laughs> I mean, I'm busy too, but I make time for the right, you know. So, why do you travel so much? I love traveling. Was there like a dream of traveling? Was it like uh, every opportunity I have, I'm going to hit the road? I mean, you're making mature decisions now, but early yeah. on, that used to actually really inspire me seeing you travel. Um... So, like, growing up, mm -hmm. we road tripped everywhere, mm -hmm. often to the same places. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places, like, people used to go that we didn't go to. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, like, you know, I, oh, we went to Disney World. I'm like, we just keep going to a great grandma's house in D.C. <laughs> Your great grandma here? She was. Oh. Mm -hmm. Damn. Illinois Ave, Northwest. Oh, okay, Illinois. okay, all right, shoot. Mm -hmm. Never knew. The more you know. See, mind of my business, we just be making these moments like, oh, I never knew. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But the first time I was on a plane, it was a flight to Boston. Okay. So the flight was like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it was my junior year of high school. But it was like, it was cool. It was fine. I was a little nervous, but it went well. Mm -hmm. um, I think my first international trip that I remember. Did you get it? I think so. Yeah, I got it. Finally <laughs> 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 called out. I was like, you dead. <laughs> you dead. <laughs> he was being rude, making special appearances. I was like, well, we not going to do in the middle of this interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a hell of a grip too. <laughs> Ooh. It's like you snatched a lizard and pulled the direction and got it. Good night. Yo, you know sometimes if you don't grip hard enough, they just chill in until you let it loose and it just flies out of your hand and then you just like pissed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good at clapping mosquitoes. Really? You, you just be killing them? Now it's gross. Because if, I, I if just they well the, fed, it's gross. Ugh. Yeah, it's nasty. I just have the, um, you know, the tennis racket that just zaps them? Yeah, there's tennis rackets that zap them. You ain't know about the tennis rackets? Okay, fun fact about me. What's I've up? been getting tore up by mosquitoes since the beginning of time. Really? And I've tried everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be is, back. Just keep talking. Which is why I'm good at killing them. Mm -hmm. You was just letting them have their way with you? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but mm -hmm. I found out within the within the last couple of years that I don't know how accurate it is. Oh, wow. I don't know how accurate it is, but... You have sweet if, blood? If you are O positive, mm -hmm. it does not matter what you do. They're still gonna find you. Is that the one that you can share with everybody? I think so. I have that. But it's not. It's not the rare one. That's mm -hmm. O negative. I have the one that you can share with everyone. That's all I know. I think O positive. I can share with. Like them. yeah, I could like donate, and they could just use it for anyone. I'm one of those people. Now I want to Google it. <laughs> you can do that later. <laughs> This is why, mm -hmm. if you're ever on one of those shows where you gotta call a friend, you probably mm -hmm. could call me because I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> I'm gonna read an so article. I got you, I got you. I'm gonna read an article mm -hmm. and the reference articles. And I'm gonna be like, great, this is legit. All in 20 seconds. All in 20 seconds. <laughs> Speed reader. People get annoyed. They're like, you read it already? I'm like, yeah. In, Quickly. in 1872, like, okay. <laughs> please keep that to yourself. Let me, I got you. Because <laughs> if you did the rest of it, you just swinging that around, I'd be dying. <laughs> I know. 